first of all, welcome to Germany. Welcome to Shift Automotive. We're glad that you're here. Thank you. um, and of course, we want to, s to know something about you, which is more personal. So we start with the first question. What was the most inspiring book you ever read? The most inspiring book I ever read? Um, <clears throat> actually, there's one that everybody who gets into animation reads, uh, and it's by these two guys who worked directly under Walt Disney called The Illusion of Life. And this book is like, it's, it's kind of the, the Bible of animation. And if you, do, if you read this book, it teaches you the fundamentals of how to bring an inanimate object to life. So it's probably the most influential for a lot of people in my profession. So uh, I think a lot of uh, people in the, uh, in the automotive sector could read that as well right now. Uh, yeah, abs <laughs> absolutely. There's a lot of good things in there. All right. Next thing, uh, the first thing you do in the morning. First thing I do in the morning is probably get up, obviously, and <laughs> usually wake my children up and get them going towards school is usually the first thing in the morning. And then afterwards, coffee. Yeah, and then coffee. <laughs> Always then coffee, yeah. All right. Last question. If you couldn't do the job you're doing today, what other job would you choose? Uh, that's a good question. You know, I, I love animation. I love story taking, uh, storytelling and filmmaking. Um, and I might, I might venture more into the live action world out of animation, which is something I'm kind of working with right now. So that, that might be the next thing. <laughs> If I was not in entertainment at all, I think I would somehow be involved with cars because I actually am a car person as well. So not sure what that would be, but I would do that as well. <laughs> but are you happy that you're here in your function as well? So we start our panel right now. Um, I mentioned a lot of innovation um, which came uh, from films, actually. Yeah. Um, when you look at the films in the last yeah, two or three years, what do you think which technology will shape our really our future? Mm. It, it's a great question. It's amazing to me how good CG has gotten, um, not just in animation, but you know, you're seeing visual special effects now where you can't tell what is being filmed, what is actual versus what is virtual. Um, and I think that's going to continue to evolve. And if it's done well, if it supports the storytelling, it's, it's, it's a great thing to lean into. I think it's going to just keep getting better and better. Um, Lightning McQueen. Yeah. Sally, Luigi, these are all characters in the movie Cars. Um, if autonomous driving is our future um, and we kind of interact with the cars and the cars interact with each other, will they get some kind of character and, and personality? You know, this is, this is what we looked at with cars was we were taking characters that we love, just lovable characters, and saying, what car represents this character? So an excited little Italian guy had to be a Fiat 500. <laughs> and of course, Lightning McQueen, a fast, cocky race car, he's red and he's swoopy. So we look at these shapes and saying, what is the shape telling us? How does the shape have personality to it? Um, we put the World War II Army Jeep next to the hippie Volkswagen bus because we knew this would be the perfect neighbors to fight with each other, these kind of things. Yeah, but when you think about reality, do you think in the future uh, of our mobility, the cars will also, because they are going to interact with each other, the, we, we're going to kind of, yeah, interact with them as well. Will they have some kind of character? It's, it's funny because a car by itself has no character in itself, right? Its, its character is defined by either the person driving it or the person programming it or the person designing it. So I think the question more to ask yourself is, in the future, when we own a car, does the car learn about us and then change the way it behaves or acts or even looks based on our input? And that's very possible. <laughs> I'm very curious how these uh, characters will look like, uh, especially um, according to the brands. So the Italian, the Italian car will say, all right, let's go on a journey and like maybe, that one. And maybe stop, <laughs> stop for coffee. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, went to, uh, coffee. I went to SEMA, which is a big automotive event they do in Las Vegas every year in November. And there was a gentleman there that took a 3D printer and he 3D printed a car. He literally designed the car there and hit print. And by the end of the weekend, he drove this thing away that was 3D printed. So it could be anything you want it to be. Yeah, the German car would say, you have to fill out some sheets because yeah. I want to know something about <laughs> the data security. Right. Um, <laughs> all right. Um, speaking of about uh, data and speaking about technology, uh, the origin of Pixar is basically uh, a company which was focused on computers. Uh, they were just computer expert before um, uh, Steve Jobs came there. Um, but you always focused on emotions. Ne nevertheless, you focused on emotion. How can technology help companies, for example, to create with technology some emotions? 
Well, I, I think what you're touching on is, is a human connection to what you're doing. So when you watch a Pixar film, you have a human connection, whether you're watching a car or a fish or a robot, you make a connection because you're seeing beyond what the, what the objects are on the screen and saying, ah, that's a dad who's protective of his child, or oh, this is somebody who's had loss, or that's the connection. And I think for um, the auto manufacturers to think about how to make a human connection with their product in the future, once you have an emotional attachment, you care whether that thing lives or dies, and this is what you need to have, is that emotional connection that makes you have a vested interest in this thing and saying, I really want to be part of this. Is that possible even in the sharing economy? Because I was really, truly sad when I have to give up my first car. I was truly sad. But if it's not mine, I don't know if there are a kind of emotional connection between me and the cars. And, and there may not be. I mean, the, the, the emotional connection may be the experience you have in the car. For instance, your phone you keep with you all the time. So your phone has your photos, it has your memories, it has your things in it. If we get inside a different car, but we plug this phone in that has our memories and our images, maybe that personal connection, you take with you from vehicle to vehicle. It's possible. That's right. Uh, the, the, I, I had a, a fire alert in the hotel and everyone was running outside and carrying their smartphones with them. So it was the first thing they saved. I said, oh my God. And I, I did the same, uh, same you did. thing. So yeah. Safety first. <laughs> Safety first. Um, so Pixar is uh, well known for its um, powerful storytelling. Uh, and this is kind of a buzzword right now in the uh, automotive sectors and in other companies. You have to do storytelling in your marketing. So what can the um, companies learn from Pixar in case of storytelling? Well, storytelling is, is very simply um, relaying a message in a way that is relatable or gettable. And I can tell you, hey, look, here's, here's, a, here's a ring. I want you to have this ring. And you might go, okay, cool, great. If I hand you the same ring and I say, this is my grandfather's ring. He gave it to me before he died. This is the ring he gave my grandmother the day they met. You would remember that. That's an emotional connection. And that's all we're doing is we're relaying information in a way that makes you go, ah, I care about this a little bit more. So if the question is how can automakers or how can anybody do that, think about the message you're trying to get across. Not manipulative, not trying to say, we want you to buy this, but tell me why this is something I should care about. And if it's honest and it's genuine, I'll make a connection with it. That's a big task for kind it, of... It is, it is. <laughs> for for uh, cars. Um, We had, for example, Carl Benz, Thomas Edison, as well as Steve Jobs. I think uh, they had one thing in common. They challenged all the status quo. But I think they were all also dreamers. When I look at the companies um, at these days, they all have KPIs. They all look on kind of an Excel shield or something like that. Did we, forgot, uh, did we forget to dream? And that is the reason why we can't really... Um, invent something completely new because we're not able to dream and to look out of our, of our boxes. Hmm. It, it's, it's something to think about. Steve Jobs took risk. He took a lot of risk. Um, when he acquired Pixar, he already had Apple that had been very successful. He tried Next Computers, which people have already forgotten was not successful, <laughs> went back to Apple. And when he bought Pixar, he saw the technology was there, but he wasn't sure how this could be a, a business model. And he believed in it, and he took a big risk. And financial investment to make Pixar turn into something. And once it clicked, once we found that storytelling and entertainment, uh, CG animation, which we were the first studio to do a full-length feature animation film in CG, that's when it happened for us. But it was a lot of risk, and him saying, let's push forward with this vision. Let's ex we have to try these things. We have to um, take big risk and maybe fall a few times before we make that connection. And we did it. Uh, speaking about thinking out of the box, what would happen if you and your team were able to design a future vehicle, not just on a screen, just in reality? It's How would it look like? It, it, this is something that a couple people have come to us and say, hey, Pixar, we want you to design this uh, vehicle however you want. And it's funny because uh, Pixar is located in the Bay Area, San Francisco Bay Area, which is a very environmentally conscious area. And, and a lot of people at work now are either ride sharing or they're using electric vehicles. And um, many of them are getting away from petrol cars. Uh, so maybe the vehicle would be something that would be fun and maybe obviously future thinking and clean uh, energy, but also something that doesn't take itself too seriously. I think this is another thing about Pixar is we don't take ourselves too seriously. But um, you're also a consultant for autonomous, uh, uh, for um, car companies, for the um, uh, sector. And what do you really... Um, say them what, what, what kind of um, advices do you have for them? Because, I mean, 
it's really creative what you do, but it's still a cinema. It's still a screen you yeah. design the things for. So what, what advices do you give the companies to say, all right, you should really do that? Well, this is the thing I have to ask the companies, car companies when I work with them is, what do you want to do? What is it that you're trying to achieve? And if you don't know your why, if you don't have an answer for why you're making this product, that's the first thing you have to figure out. So if a car company is saying, we want to design this new little cube that's going to go uh, 350 miles on a charge and this and this, I say, but why? Well, well, because people need it. Okay, great. But why? Uh, because, well, it's where our company wants to go. Okay, I can start with that. And then we start going down the road of what do you want it to look like? What do you need it to do? What is the purpose of it? And once you answer that why you're making this thing, then you can run through the filter of how can we make it the best it can be? Are we doing something that hasn't been done before? Are we, are we looking here or are we looking way up the road? All these questions help get us to where we want this car to be. So that's what I try to help them with is to pop their head up and look a little bit further forward when they're making their vehicle. That sounds like a startup mindset. Is it really uh, transferable to the big companies? Um, because I think they have all uh, these, yeah, these roads to go, and everyone knows what he or she is allowed to do. Yeah. Uh, is it really possible to, yeah, to transfer that mindset into a big company or group? We have a very similar challenge when we make animated films. We have creative designers that just say, "I want to do this and this," but then we have a technology group saying. We can't do this. This isn't possible. Oh, we can do an experiment to see if we can do this. So you have art and technology challenging each other. This is the same thing in designing a car. You have the artists that just want to make it beautiful, but you have safety and engineering saying, ah, I don't know if we can do that. It's a dance. And the perfect, uh, it is a dance. And the, and the perfect thing that comes out of it is there's a balance between the art and the technology to achieve this dream that everybody's happy with, hopefully. It's an iterative, iterative process that gets closer to this goal that you're looking for. I think a lot of people shoot this one target and they, they put their head down and they go for this target and they're done instead of being iterative and going back and forth and refining it to getting a point where everybody's happy with it. And it can happen, it, it is achievable. So what's your greatest advice um, for finding new ideas? I mean, one of the, the coolest things I saw uh, um, with cars was that You use the windshield for the eyes and not just the lights, which is quite uh, the obvious way. Yeah. So what do you say? How can we be more creative in our everyday's life, in our everyday's work? It, you know, there's the old Apple saying was think differently. Steve Jobs yeah, that's used easy that. Said. <laughs> right. But it's true is, is thinking a little bit differently. When we looked at cars and bringing cars to life, you're right. There were these sometimes these little stop motion cartoons would have the eyes in the headlights. And we said, well, this is a bit like the head of a snake. The, the eyes are down front and low to the ground. But what if we treat it like the head of a horse or a dog? The mouth is in the front, but the eyes are back on the skull a little ways. And you open up the whole front to be a face. That was a very simple thing. And it turns out that was done in a Walt Disney cartoon in 1952. So we actually had to look backwards in order to look forward. So sometimes I think we're, we look at this thing and say, how do we move from here? But if you stop and say, what is it again that we're trying to do? What's the why? You can look back a little bit further and go, oh my gosh, this was done 40 years ago or 50 years ago, and then take your step forward. You said that cars showed the first autonomous vehicles truly enjoying their s themselves on the road. Yeah. Um, how can we preserve the romance of driving or even more um, owning, or is it just really for cinema? I don't think it has to be for cinema. I, I, I think th there's some people that, that just want to get in a car and it's just a utility thing and they don't care about the romance. They want to get in, they want to go to where they want to go, they get out and move on. <clears throat> for other people like myself, I want it to be aesthetically pleasing and I want it to have switches this way and I want this material, but people are different. I think when you have a future of cars that are more modular, You can make it what you want it to be. You can change it to be different things for different people. That's the ability I think we have, especially in an autonomous world when I don't have to worry about driving is, it can be modular. I can change it to be oh, really fancy and cool and neat, or maybe it's just very simple and just gets me A to B. It can be either one. This is a big question. The big question is, do we really have to say farewell to the joy of driving? But if you don't mind, I'd like to enlarge our group here. And for all of you in the audience, this is time to use Slido again. You have the QR code on your badge. Please uh, ask us some questions and vote for questions because the most voted questions I will ask at the end of the panel. And I say thanks for a moment. Thank you.